Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? May you care to have a seat? We are about to start the program of today's seminar on the topic of Timor-Leste and ASEAN for candidate to next member state. This event is jointly organized by the Research Institute on Contemporary Southeast Asia, the German Southeast Asian Center of Excellence for Public Policy and Governance, as well as the Asian Governance Foundation. My name is Sukhwam Lee, Project Manager at CPG, and I'm happy to be your moderator for this afternoon. Um, I would like to send hello, say hello also to Nicole Lomner, who is joining us online from this one. Is that correct? Okay. Thank you very much for having time for us. As you can see from the agenda, we will have some welcome words, an opening address, and then we will go into the round table discussion. And for the first round, I would like now to invite Jerome Samuel, the director of IRASEN, to speak the first welcome words. Thank you. Um, you must have a little bit of a Yeah, thank you. Your Excellency, uh, I mentioned that Jesus Martins, the ambassador for Timor-Leste in Thailand, in Thailand. Your uh, uh, Excellency General Wolfgang Jung Hadid, Your Excellency Kassit Gurnia, uh, uh, dear uh, Christine, dear Nadine, uh, in, uh, uh, um, in, in, in this one, uh, dear Tom and dear Penny. So I'm really pleased to welcome you all here today for this, um, this round table, this seminar, which will be discussing a much important matter for democracy as well as for ASEAN and other countries who are interested in what is happening and will happen in the coming uh, years in this region of the world. Um, just two words uh, to explain to the few of uh, you and us who don't know exactly what's in our site. We are the French Research Center, you know, the, uh, the French Ministry for Foreign Affairs and the National Center for Scientific Research based here in Bangkok, but we are covering all Southeast Asia, including the Western, of course, and uh, working on different fields of uh, uh, disciplines in social sciences and humanities. And here in Bangkok, uh, we are of course interested in international relations or regional relations matters, of course. And we do work with uh, different uh, partners. And uh, TPG is one of our partners. This is maybe the first seminar we organize together. I hope we will organize many other in, in, in the future too. But what's sure, we always have good experience working in, in cooperating with German institution. So, thank you, Juan. Um, um, please. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jerome. Thank you very much, Juan, for your welcome words. And next, I would like to ask the uh, city director, Henning Glaser, to deliver his forthcoming words. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, uh, I'm very happy and very pleased that we indeed inaugurate the cooperation between the CPG and IRASEC uh, with this very interesting seminar, this tiny seminar. And I will make it very short because we are having not that much time with great speakers. I would like to welcome the speakers. I want to express our gratitude to His Excellency the Ambassador of Timor-Leste for being here, to General Manzan. I don't know if he represents the Senate of Thailand, but it's in spite of being a senator very busy as such, still being here for us, we are very grateful for that. And I think uh, we have here his book. I can recommend to read it. It's his biography as the peacekeeping commander in Timor Leste. So that is why it's really great to have him here. We have also. Uh, Tan Kasset, uh, who is also, I think, uh, perfectly suited to speak about uh, Timor-Leste uh, as a former Minister for Affairs, veteran 
uh, ambassador of Thailand. We have, by the way, two more ambassadors of the Kingdom of Thailand here, uh, Ajahn Bora Witt and uh, Ambassador Tom Witt. And we have Professor Young Yang here, who uh, might add a Chinese perspective. And uh, that is, I think, a great uh, group here to discuss and uh, deliberate a little bit about the accession of Timor-Nest to ASEAN. I would like to express very much also my thank to Gabriel, who is our very nice counterpart at TRSEC, and we have cooperated very well in preparation of this seminar. And for sure, the idea of everything comes from Christine, I have to say that. So she gave the idea to do it at all. With that, I would like to welcome you again very much on behalf of uh, CBG at the Faculty of Law of Thomas Hart University, where we are located and wish us a full for the seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Henry, for your welcome words and for the next opening address to the seminar. I would like to invite John Bruslan Yung Padik to speak. Uh, he is a senator, and in the Senate, he is uh, the chairman of the Standing Committee of Armed Forces and State Security. He, is, he was the former Supreme Commander of Armed Forces of Thailand, and for this event, especially important, the former Force Commander of the United Nations Transition Administration uh, from July 2000 to September 2001. The floor is yours, Mr. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I have only five minutes. Maybe a little longer. A little bit more. Uh, yeah, not, speak. I'm not expert in speaking. You know, I have a sister, but I don't talk too much. <laughs> uh, it's sort of homecoming for me here because uh, I used to stay in a, a flat, army flat, only a few hundred yards from here for almost 10 years. This is uh, about 20 years ago, so during my young days, and I kind of get so used to Thammasat University as a school man because I only come here at the end of the month when I have no money to spend outside <laughs> because the pay is just not enough for young officer. Uh, and I, since then, I, I have been got a child by Thammasat over the years, happy days, kind of. Too much, I don't want to be too long, but I have more than a few friends as a the teacher. Uh, Professor Noranit, long time, <laughs> one of the lectures. Noranit, we would we would form, we would form, we would form a family. If they perhaps something pass away, but I don't want to talk for that too long. About East Timor and Asia, the the topic, but I don't know the the rest would be what in detail because it's only one fish long. That's good, so I can say anything, eh? Uh, Timor, Timor Leste, but the ambassador, about Timor Leste, the ambassador is here. <laughs> but his version and my version follow it may be different. Because when I was there, I think you just cut out jail. You've been in jail for a while. Yes. <laughs> uh, and today, the East Timor Leste, the time of East Timor Leste, alumni, uh, back being uh, in the soldiers that the first battalion commander passed away and the first day of funeral today. Yeah. So this is, it made me think of him and think of him. I met you one of the first day there. This is over 30 years now. But the were at that time, uh, it was today, but really hopeful because the UN uh, with more than 30 countries for them to help. And that's a good, very good start. So if you talk about Timor Leste and ASEAN, then you have to talk about Timor Leste and UN more than 20 years ago. The complaint about Timor Leste being in ASEAN for some country anyway, but what? Few, what with only few. And they were worrying about uh, Timor Leste adjustment to Asia. But 
when people ask me, what do you think? I said, we like to welcome Timor Leste at any time because they might not be up to the standard in something, but there are a lot of things that they are up to standard and even beyond open standard. Because that standard, standard is UN standard. Because UN was the first cabinet members and they trained uh, the East Timorese to become cabinet members after the UN left. So that standard, like the justice system, quite good UN standard. Uh, political system, administration system, but quite all right. So I'm not to worry, but when people say, well, then I didn't come and say, oh, if they have difficulty, the 10 countries, ASEAN members, can help them. That's the spirit of welcoming the youngest brother. So I'd like them to come long before uh, so that we can so that we can help. Then when, when you help, and maybe they help us also, uh, the relation would be strong in difficult years, start from difficult years. The Timor Leste, East Timor, that time, we can say that it's a new country, new baby of the world. Uh, the youngest member of the UN at that time, now still quite young, there are not many countries afterward. And uh, they will be proud if East Timor Leste get accepted to ASEAN and it's coming very soon, eh? or already a person eh? <laughs> that candidate is now now accepted uh, and we would like to prepare to help you prepare or help you to think to prepare. Uh, that that would not be difficult. You will be close to us and we have this spirit to help you and almost the country would think that of East Timor as the youngest brother, the, the baby of the world, the baby of the world. They will take good care of you, but you have to be strong. That, that we can get from each other. And I'm glad that I, you know, I've been know, knowing uh, Henry for more than a few years now. I just met Jerome a few minutes ago and also Christine. We're glad that you, you know, from Europe, you come to help. That's good, and this is our newest ambassador. One thing about Timor, I think they have the capable leaders. Hmm. Because the people, just like Thailand, not so long ago, mostly are liberated. Uh, right during drama, fire, and all. Even during Lama 7, during the that time of revolution, a lot of people in literally. Uh, East Timor, okay, probably better now, but uh, still a lot of uh, literate people. Uh, but because what happened, bring a lot, it's, it's very useful for them. The leader, the leader, they are well see what you call well seasoned politician because they have been dealing with the structuring on uh, dealing with other countries, friends, uh, get get them to do what they want. Is and they their struggle made them strong. They were fighting in the jungle. Most of them, like. Uh, and the present Prime uh, Minister Tiema Thalma Kanru, they were in a jungle, in a jungle, you struggle. But Jose Ramon Sota, now the president, and he was president and 
uh, prime minister before also. He was not in the jungle, but I think he, he was in the maybe difficult jungle, more difficult jungle, or bigger jungle is the jungle of the world. He's been around the world to, to struggle for help. And very successful. So I think we, the ASEAN can be comfortable that this country would not be a burden. They will have good idea. In some area, there can be good example what the ASEAN country should do, say in justice system, say in the leadership. Like uh, some government try to spend a lot of money. Some government just try to be rich. But the Maurice, when they get more money from the oil, oil well, huh? or industry because they have more than more than enough of budget, more than double uh, of the budget because the oil refiner oil well have to be from uh, the deal with Australia and Timor would get would get a big percentage of income. But the leaders they decide at the beginning that they would not spend that money until their people get sufficient education to spend money. Because money can be spent uselessly or even dangerously if you don't have enough sense or enough education. They would like to win. That's probably a good example of our country, which is just one more and more money. Otherwise, nothing, nothing can advance. But small country like Timor can be a good example for us. This is probably more than five minutes now. Okay. Yes. <laughs> thank you. But thank you for in on behalf of uh, Timorese, but you are here. <laughs> Both of us can thank them for doing this useful thing, and I hope there would be more that you do something like this because good ideas is very valuable. It can turn into a lot of good things for the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, General uh, Bonsan, uh, for this very opening address and um, sharing your experiences and hopes, hopes for Simonis. Um, with that, I would like to inform you that uh, General Bursan has a very tight schedule. He has a, 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 a meeting in the Senate later, so he will uh, give us a little bit earlier. If it's correct, General. For me, you inform me that you are going to be there. Not be not able to, to stay the whole session here. Uh, not the whole session, but yeah, yeah. for some time. Yeah, I just informed the audience about this. Okay, with that, we will now uh, begin the uh, seminar, the content part of the seminar. Um, we are here to discuss and explore uh, issues concerning the ascension of Timor Leste to the ASEAN, and uh, we are exploring the impact. Of the, first, of the upcoming ascension for the country, for ASEAN itself. We will also uh, score the geopolitical uh, consequences uh, developments uh, associated with the new membership of the team of ASEAN. For these questions and this discussion, uh, we are very happy to have been attended for distinguished speaker. I would like to first introduce them to the audience a little bit before then starting to some questions to the panelists. Um, Excellency Vincencio de Jesus Martins is the ambassador of Timor Leste to Thailand. He was formerly also ambassador to Malaysia, Myanmar, Vietnam, and the Philippines. That was the last uh, post before coming to Thailand. Excellent visit to his right is the former foreign minister of Thailand, a former diplomat who served as a resident to many countries across the world, including the Soviet Union and Mongolia, Russia and the former Soviet Republics, Germany, Japan, the United States, and 
last couple of weeks in Indonesia, where he served in the years 1994 to 1996. Please correct me because he currently serves as a board member of the Asian Humanitarian Parliamentary for Human Rights and also as a CPG senior researcher. Next to me, Dr. Christine Kavise is the deputy director of the Real Estate. She is also an associate to the South Asia Center of the National Institute of Oriental Languages and Civilization. Um, she was a member of the UN Commission on Territory Planning and Development in Corpus, the only special administrative uh, region of Timor Leste, if I'm correct. And she served also as an international advisor to the Ministry of uh, Education. Yes. Last but not least, Nadine Lokma. Online with us is a doctoral fellow and researcher at the Institute of Social and Political Science of the University of Lisbon. And she is the co author of a just recently published book on the topic, on the title of The Paradox of Art and Centrality Timor Leste Betwixt and Between. Uh, and this month, published this month with Brilliant Publishing House. Welcome to you, also. With that, I would like to address the first question I have prepared to Ambassador Martins. And before we start with discussing political questions on the ascension of Timor Leste to the ASEAN, to the ASEAN, please allow me to ask you to describe in a few sentences what is currently going on in your country in regards to what is moving the people in Timor Leste in regards to their concerns and hopes. Well, first, uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Stonel, Dr. Henning, uh, General Rosen, uh, Dr. Christine, Dr. Nadine, and then you, yourself, as well as the director and our colleague in, in this one. Uh, and for this uh, auspicious moment uh, and uh, uh, yes, uh, to organize this seminar for us to share our, our thought and uh, our hopes regarding the team, so the team that uh, uh, you uh, offer today for us to discuss a session of our team of Well, uh, you ask about what is uh, now uh, trendy in Timor Leste. Right? Now we are preparing for election, our parliamentary election. As you know, that we have adopted uh, semi presidential uh, uh, system. We have a president, or the president already, uh, already conducted the presidential election. We elected the uh, general council just mentioned, uh, Dr. Ramuzoka. And now we are going to elect our parliamentarians. Parliamentary to elect the Prime Minister. So now it's the 21 in Timor. And then uh, regarding ASEAN, yeah, people are, are hoping that uh, one day very soon, one time very soon, we could uh, be able to, to be pulled in by our friends, our brothers and sisters in ASEAN. Uh, and I really hope that uh, within the organization, we could be more prosperous, it could be more uh, cohesive in the, in the society, uh, and then with that you can force more uh, I would say probabilities to grow together, and then politically, soci socially, economically, and culturally. So all the, all the aims is, is, is uh, uh, similar to, to, to the first uh, the first uh, ideas of uh, creating ASEAN that we have to sit together, to move together, and grow together, prosperous together. Yeah, so, and then um, as you know that uh, uh, Dr. also, General Dawson also mentioned about uh, some blessings that uh, we have in Timor uh, that uh, uh, thanks to that uh, condition survived until now. So I'll just mention that uh, in 1989 he was there. He saw 
the country, 80% of the infrastructure is devastated. And it was not only uh, how to say, eliminating the physical being of the, of the people, but also psychological. So we are still suffering something in now, like trauma and so on. So, uh, but uh, after that, after that, uh, uh, friends in ASEAN, yeah, they stretch their hand to welcome us. Uh, and it was so, uh, they have a little bit, and uh, the audience about the idea of joining ASEAN. You know, it was in 74. 74, during the, during our process of decolonization, uh, after the Carnation Revolution in, in, in Portugal, I think, of France, from France, you know, exactly. Uh, Portugal started to give us uh, liberty to choose our own history. Uh, then uh, the process started in people, all political movements started in people and so on. And at the time, a political party which uh, increased or uh, uh, advocated for the immediate independence, which was Petri. You know, said our now president of the Republic, who was still very young at the time, 24 years old. He was sent to Jakarta to meet with the then uh, foreign minister Adam uh, Adamalek, just to express our willingness that uh, after we, we acquire our independence, we want to join us here. So the idea was. was uh, was uh, already sprouted and long before. Yeah. And uh, it was interrupted, interrupted in 1999, uh, 1975, and for uh, 24 years, we were together in Indonesia, we were in Indonesia. Uh, de facto, yeah, we were part of Indonesia. Uh, but at the same time, we were part of, part of ASEAN already. Indonesia is part of ASEAN, we are also part of uh, ASEAN already. But then it must uh, it requires, you know, uh, legality and so on. In 1999, when we, after the referendum, we again revived that idea with expression to the to the uh, ASEAN member states, and they will come us. You know, they will come us. Thailand will come us. Singapore will come us. Uh, and the rest, all all ASEAN countries will come there. So we started to prepare. prepare, prepare, prepare. And as I, I told you that, that we suffered physically, psychologically, so the preparation was uh, took a little bit too too long and arduous, arduous because of all the facilities, all the shortages that we suffered yeah, from like today until today. Uh, but the people, you know, uh, we succeeded to do the, to conduct the socialization to the people. How important are they? And the people, all the people, they understand, they are convinced that uh, joining us it will be profitable for what we want to do. So now we are preparing for that. And thank you very much for Thailand, for Indonesia, for Singapore, for Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Myanmar, the Philippines, Malaysia, for accepting us in principle uh, that we should uh, uh, become you know, a part of us here. The 11th uh, member of ASEAN. So we will we, 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 we compose a soccer team, you know. Uh, a soccer team, you know. Now it's only 10, but when they are playing, the soccer team. I don't know, maybe Tim will have to be the keeper, or maybe the, maybe the forward uh, or striker, I don't know. But I think uh, we still need, we need some key physical changes. But we believe that uh, our friends, our brothers and sisters in ASEAN, and also uh, some of the world. Australia is also uh, supporting us, New Zealand, Portugal, uh, France, uh, you know, European Union, all of them you know, are supporting us. And, uh, we should become, you know, uh, the idea of, a, of, a, of becoming a member of uh, ASEAN is a, a good one. So I'm not preparing to bring all efforts, all possible efforts to, to, to get to that end. Yeah, thank you very much. Share this expectation and hopes for ASEAN, for ASEAN uh, membership. Uh,
Allow me please to, to, to raise another question because you spoke of many countries uh, supporting the ascension of, uh, of uh, Timor-Leste to the Laos and, and you mentioned the countries here in Southeast Asia and beyond. Uh, I would like to always pick this up and ask you for a short comment on uh, within this process, how, how do you see the relation of Timor-Leste to countries like China or Australia and the US? Uh, in our constitution, it enshrines that uh, we must be friend of everybody and enemy to no one. So, based on that uh, philosophy, of the doctrine that uh, we develop our policies, uh, our politics, and so on. So, we have very good relations with Australia, we have good relations with Indonesia, good relations with China, good relations with uh, every country in the world. Of uh, course, uh, that the idea that uh, uh, I think ASEAN, ASEAN uh, was created in the during those uh, quite turbulent uh, era where there were two very influential ideologies, you know, and uh, the so called the, the, the economy of uh, East and West. Uh, uh, and ASEAN has uh, developed the policies. I think uh, we are following the ASEAN way and then succeed to become, you know, to present itself as a, an axis of balance, you see, axis of balance. And then to, to really uh, help toning down those frictions in those situations. So we avoid, we avoid the uh, catastrophes in the world's Cold War, in the era of Cold War. I think ASEAN is still very relevant, very relevant. Before it was only the world was bipolar, but now it becomes multipolar. Multipolar. And all sides are powerful. All sides are you know are expressing themselves in you know, the, the, the the willingness to conquer this and conquer that. So I think ASEAN continues to be very relevant. With the accession of Timor Leste, Timor Leste to add some more voice, one more voice, and then uh, some more weight to the to the the organization so that in unison, unison, we could move together to you know to maybe put a little bit of leverage you know, toward the world's politics and uh, uh, security uh, architecture of the world. So uh, I think uh, that's why the uh, United States are very very keen uh, to, to, to be able to when ASEAN and then it is splitting a little bit. Pushing all the ASEAN countries and third countries in order to support, so that we can be able to assist the organization very soon. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Um, thank you for, 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 for these question answers to my two questions. Um, it appears that I collect some, some remarks and statements of all the panelists so that will be then the basis for the forum discussion in the floor. And uh, with that, I would like to continue with Mr. Sikasit. Uh, what, in your eyes, will be the impact of the ascension of Timor as to ASEAN on ASEAN and vice versa? How could this membership impact Timor -Leste itself? Thank you very much. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. I visited East Timor twice. The first time as a foreign minister for bilateral visit. I think, if I remember, the year is 2009 or 10. And second time, about six, seven years ago, as a member of Liberal International based in London, as well as uh, on the executive committee of the Council of Asian Liberals and Democrats based in Manila. And the second visit was, I think, more or less in recognition and celebration of the success story of East Timor becoming more and more full-fledged democratic entity to the 
in view of many and congratulations once again, Zaha Ambassador. And with that, to answer the question, I think the presence of, of East Timor in ASEAN would add positive things to ASEAN as a whole because you are democratic. It somewhat reduces or even to start to erode the presence of uh, prevalent authoritarianism in ASEAN. I think that's a very welcome sign. And behind that, the presence of East Timor in ASEAN is a reflection of the reconciliation processes between uh, Indonesia <coughs> And, East Timor. and there has been somewhat, I think, the past few years, a comfort level that would not, I think, prevent East Timor from joining ASEAN. I think it's in the back of many of the ASEAN members stayed. I think throughout the past 10, 15 years before that, that whether we should decide, should have decided to admit East Timor, but what would be the deep feeling of Indonesia. I think that I don't have the proof, but I think as a political animal, I do feel that some of us were a bit reluctant. Let's see the cause of the relationship between Indonesia and East Timor. And I think all of that grievances of history have come to pass, and that is now a comfort level between Indonesia and East Timor. Congratulations also, Ambassador, and also to my Indonesian colleagues for being, I think, open-hearted and putting history at the back and to move forward together of the 11 ASEAN members. The third point that I just want to, to touch a bit is the fact that uh, the only conditionality of membership in ASEAN is the geographical location. And uh, East Timor is in the very heart of Southeast Asia. And if one were to recall that Sri Lanka at one time did try to apply for the mentorship of ASEAN, it was right immediately rejected that it is not in, in, in Southeast Asia. And there were no other conditionalities for membership in ASEAN besides the geographical location. And when Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Myanmar joined ASEAN, that geographical conditionality was there, but there was no other conditionalities. And whatever conditionalities were to be enforced in the past few years, alleged to be enforced, I don't think they are. They were unfounded, not right at all. Because I could recall that in the midst of 1980s, my two colleagues at the back, Ambassador Borovic and Convit, I think some of us did have, I in particular, because at that time I was in the ASEAN Affairs Department. And I was one of the traders to the young Brunei officials when Brunei just joined ASEAN. So we're being a teacher at the Guru and so on, and to help in the Brunei officials to be able to adjust to the life of ASEAN and how to prepare themselves and so on. But it's the basic in period. And I could also recall that most of the early meetings of ASEAN when Laos joined, never a word was being uttered by the Laotian delegation. They could not attend all the meetings, but that's a deter them in being a full-fledged member. So to come out with the conditionality that East Timor was not ready because most of the officials do not speak English. They only speak Portuguese, Indonesian, and the local language. So, you, these are the imposition of conditionalities in order to deter the membership of ASEAN. It's not right, it's politically incorrect, and so on. And it is, doesn't reflect the consistency of the ASEAN position when it came to Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Myanmar, and so on. The other point is that even if by tomorrow, East Timor will to become the full-fledged member of ASEAN. And some of the meetings that East Timor can, uh, would not be able to attend, we can tell the Thai delegation. 
to act and to speak on behalf of this demand. Among us here, why, why not? We even have some projects that we do not have ever seen in Africa or in Latin America. And we did ask Malaysia or Indonesia and ever seen to look after our interests. Especially the Thai workers being stranded in those countries and so on, and the constant matters. But when it comes to the political, social, and economic cooperation, that should not be the case. Besides, this team can always uh, commission consultant companies or academic institutions to prepare the papers, the speeches, and so on. So that, that there is no inhibition in that sense. And I think East Timor should be quickly welcomed to become a full French member of ASEAN. Now, what would be the impact? I think externally it would enhance the status of ASEAN because now we have one more member, which is the Mokatik, besides the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. A bit of democracy in Singapore, a bit of democracy in, in Thailand, but why not? I think the more, the better. And if East Timor, and also a newly independent country, least developed, one of the poorest countries, could become democracy, a democratic one, then why not the rest of the country in Southeast Asia, and by extension, the whole of the Asia Pacific region? South Pacific island countries in particular, and by extension to the Middle East, to Africa, just across the Indian Ocean, or some of the Latin American countries, just across the Pacific Ocean. So it would be an added element, and ASEAN could so truly say to itself and to the world at large that we are really one of element, very inclusive, reflected fully that it is a truly a regional cooperation organization. So Isima would add to the identity and to the honor and to the respect of ASEAN as a whole. And uh, the one other thing is that with the well that would be all coming from the joint development of the of the oil and gas with Australia. I could visualize that Brunei one day soon would become like, uh, East Timor would become like Brunei, like Bahrain or Qatar and so on, that we would have a lot of money to do the internal development and at the same time also to contribute to the joint projects of ASEAN as a whole and to be able to I think help ASEAN to stand firm in its various partnerships with all the dialogue partners and so on. So it would be contributed. But at the same time, East Timor with the historical relationship in Portugal would help to link ASEAN I think, a bit through the back door to Portugal and all of this to create a sort of a more balanced not Northern Europe influences in ASEAN and so on. So it's going to be an enriching experience that ASEAN would all uh, benefit. And I think uh, that the more the element of us, I think because at one time in, in various ASEAN meeting on, uh, I think in the side of the social and cultural community, we did speak once upon a time informally about the possibility of ASEAN of the 11 or the 10 at that time joining together to co-host the Olympic game or even the World Cup and why not to have a joint ASEAN football team to participate at the Asian Cup or the <laughs> World Cup and so on. I think the more we are integrated then we can become one and I think that is good for Southeast Asia as a whole and good for the world at large and I think what their mother just mentioned that we are friends to everyone. I just wrote an article published in the Dip Diplomat about a month ago. <coughs> I have started to sell the idea of turning ASEAN to be a source of neutrality and non aligned in every sense of the word and to be the linkage between the big, in the big power rivalry and so on. So why not? 
I leave that up to the relevant of us to look for peace and cooperation and not war and conflict. I think East Timor as a small country could play a very important role. And with its current president, Ramos Hatta, just to recall that he won the Nobel Peace Prize and he not, did not so far fail by the wayside like our friend or Sam Suji. And I think this very position, this stature would help to enhance the image of ASEAN as a small person of peace and reconciliation and so on. So welcome this demand to the ASEAN Forum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Jason. This is the model of Hanson. Um, to set, uh, Dr. Christine, um, we have heard from Asset and SNC Martinez about expectations, the aspirations of the geopolitical impact. Uh, how do you assess, the, assess that what has been said here by the two previous speakers as an expert for Timor's? Can you give us the first um, assessment? remarks uh, done by uh, uh, His Excellency uh, Cassit uh, on the, the, the reluctance uh, from ASEAN body to accept Timor-Leste for, I mean, we could, we could feel an hesitation for a long time, for 11 years, huh? uh, hesitation to accept uh, Timor-Leste in the grouping. And you said that your thoughts, in your view, uh, it was uh, likely because of the weight, uh, no kind of meaning, the weight of Indonesia. Uh, what would think Indonesia about this uh, admission to the, the, the grouping? And uh, I fully agree with that. I mean, uh, beside all the argument that was given on economical uh, matters or on uh, democracy, on different topics. Beside all that points, I mean one the main point that I wrote in uh, one of the, my last, my last uh, articles or so you know, written a few years ago uh, was about Indonesia. Uh, the ASEAN members knew how sensitive Indonesia was about Timor Leste. And I'm not talking about uh, the President Jokowi, obviously. I'm talking and not uh, about diplomats, Indonesian diplomats like Martin and Natalie Gawa or many others that were, in my view, supporting the idea of uh, Timor joining ASEAN. But let's say that Indonesia also has an old guard, isn't it? Uh, with uh, uh, business uh, people, but moreover uh, militaries that were in Timor Leste. Uh, for such a long time, and these people were absolutely reluctant about talking about Timor Leste or um, yeah, accepting, accepting it uh, in the grouping. And this is really a kind of, uh, of uh, where uh, ASEAN countries knew uh, the, the point of sensitivity about uh, Indonesia on this matter. The, the second point is uh, about, um, uh, just to finish on that point, but I think it's over. And the, the main question is, by the way, so why it has changed? Because even uh, the president, Joko Widodo, um, I think was uh, keen or not against the idea of accepting Timor Leste. So uh, the, the question is why? there was this kind of change in uh, deciding to admit, in principle, uh, Timor Leste uh, into the grouping. And um, that's uh, an interesting question. Um, probably, it, I think it, it may be seen in the light, in the double light, I would say, in the light of the Myanmar crisis. And when I said the Myanmar crisis, I said, one of the crises where ASEAN doesn't have much power 
to resolve, to do anything, and also a kind of crisis that show to the people that ASEAN cannot talk with a one voice, you know? Some countries are uh, uh, keen to, uh, uh, I mean, to, to support um, democratic, the return of democratic power in uh, Myanmar, others know, you know, so, I mean, um, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is also the kind of crisis where um, ASEAN uh, gets its reputation of an association uh, who doesn't move very uh, quickly, you know. Uh, this is an organization who is quite slow in taking decisions. And so I think all these kind of things has uh, an influence and maybe it has played the role also in saying, uh, okay, we cannot afford to solve, unfortunately, they try, they try hard, but unfortunately we cannot solve the crisis uh, currently happening in, uh, in Myanmar, but we also can uh, accept one new member, Timor-Leste, who is at least, who is a democratic country. And uh, I think this is, uh, this is where we can, uh, uh, we can uh, understand why uh, ASEAN uh, changed time, seem to have changed its position about, uh, about uh, the, that, the, the membership of Timor Leste. And also, um, also we, we can uh, highlight the unexpected role of Cambodia. I mean, who could have said a few years ago that Prime Minister Hun Sen and Cambodia would play a such a role in uh, bringing uh, into uh, bringing Timor Leste into the grouping. But this is I, I've been following Timor Leste for a long time in Indonesia as well, and I'm writing a lot of papers on this. And uh, this is uh, uh, yeah, unexpectedly, the, the, I would say, since uh, for a year, a bit more than a year, that. Uh, 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 Cambodia has talked a lot, I mean, about uh, Timor-Leste, as never before. So, and the third thing is also, um, uh, yeah, President Joko Widodo and Indonesia as the chair, chairman of, uh, of ASEAN, uh, <coughs> wants to play a role, uh, important role, diplomatic role, political role uh, in the region. And I think this is also good for him and good for the, for, for the region. So this is, this is also another light that we can uh, bring uh, uh, on this uh, matter. And the last thing that I would say, I have to think, but uh, this is uh, also maybe what could explain this change uh, is also Jose ramos went to Indonesia in August, in, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, he gave uh, one uh, long, quite long talk interview uh, to a think tank in Jakarta. And uh, he said uh, that it's much more easier to reach heaven than to get into ASEAN. And then all the newspaper, the day after, I can say, not the day after, the minute later, <laughs> with the social network, you know, the minute later, I mean, all the world would spread the word that it's much easier to come into uh, heaven than to, uh, to reach uh, Asia. And even Jakarta Post, I mean, the main uh, newspaper in Indonesia, written in English, said, uh, why don't we bring Timor Leste into Asia? And so many newspapers said that. So maybe, I'm joking, I'm kind of joking, but maybe also it can play a role. So I think I can stop here. Yeah. Thank you for this response to my question. Uh, I would like to turn now to Nadine. Nadine, do you hear me? Yes, I do. Can you hear me? Probably? Yes, yes, perfectly. Okay. I would like to pick up what the uh, uh, has said about the possible explanation why you came to the change and the decision in November last year accept the principle the membership of um, uh, the Al Azhar. Um, do you see other factors who have might have played a role in, in, in this process, in this 
application process, um, maybe also geopolitical uh, factors? Um, so, first of all, thank you for everything that has been said and somehow I think it's very interesting what we have heard so far and it's connecting very much to, to what I would like to say now. I'm not an expert in international relations, I must say. I'm coming from anthropology, but maybe this would be an interesting perspective on this topic. So, um, what we have done in the book that is a missing topic, this has been a research of five years. Um, we have observed internal and external dynamics. Um, from the side of the left and of us in the region of Lubinch, but also from the perspective of the world at large. Um, specifically, when we consider the Timor-Leste, it's globally very interconnected to security and view of trade in the United States, the UN, as we heard before, um, and China. So, uh, what I think has been a very remarkable change in the recent years has been the pandemic, because um, ASEAN has shown very weak approaches to help these countries, specifically to Monet. Like it has not shown um, large support and, and um, connection to 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 bring like to help Timor to get out of the situation, right? Whereas um, China has shown a very strong cultural diplomacy and um, cultural translation. So um, I think this has challenged ASEAN very much. Like also connecting to the previous years of the procedure. But I think at this current moment, we are in a new global social structure in the rise. So international regions are in the rise, and um, ASEAN is facing this challenge of positioning itself on a new global growth map. And through Timor Leste, like in the past years, we have discussed in the book, this is kind of a middleman situation, um, because Timor Leste, as I said before, has a long history of um, being globally interconnected, not least to mention to the young brother, elder brother situation that we also heard today, which I found very interesting, because um, this is a narrative that we heard very often in interviewing stage managers um, in the country, throughout our research, that, for example, ASEAN was the third more as a neighbor, and Europe, and specifically Portugal, as a brother. Um, so I think there is a strong need in cultural translation that ASEAN has not attached to yet. And what we can see and say is that ASEAN has had more of a formal bureaucratic and narrow regionalism, but I think starts to understand now that it has to move beyond that. And by admitting to the left, it can only gain a benefit concerning the South, uh, South China dispute. Um, South, South China Sea um, and other competition of centrality between the United States and the Portland. So it was always a, a, an ambiguity, I think, from both sides, or also as we heard in the interview that, that we um, mentioned in the book, um, that Timor Lash had a very good situation in, in um, communicating with the world at large. Whereas ASEAN, as one of the largest economic regions of the world, has not had this move yet. Like um, this global interaction is still lacking, and by adhering to the left and by um, acknowledging that the left brings this benefits into the grouping, I think it can raise its position and gain a more significance in the global growth plan. Yes, thank you very much um, for your explanation. Um, we will focus on the, the geopolitical perspective. Uh, interesting, you said Timor Leste was very successful in communicating its position in the world, whereas ASEAN needs to um, um, improve in, in this regard, if I uh, understood you correctly. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to, to, to pick up this, this last point of. Yeah. Um, relations, uh, international relations and international politics, and would like to, 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 to touch on the geopolitical perspective, which was also part of this um, agenda, design of the agenda. Um, observers or understand the session is a little problematic in, in, in this regard, as, as uh, that might be uh, further diluting the, the unity uh, of, of the grouping with regards to 
uh, in regards to the Chinese and uh, U.S. Uh, uh, power rivalry, um, there might be a uh, uh, misconception of what consensus. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Henry. Yeah. So to, to bring it to, to the point of what I was saying, is there is there a question? Will Will ASEAN be more exposed or exposed to high degree to the risk of the block being picked off or co-opted by big powers? This is a question to the panelists first, and then yeah, that's it. This question comes in, it, it gets back to our first uh, increasing uh, investments of China into China. I think the first point is that ASEAN has partnership, dialogue partnership relations with both sides of the equation, I mean the US and the European Union and, and member states and now the United Kingdom. And at the same time, it, also has a dialogue partnership with China and, and Russia. And so with that dialogue partnership, it means that all along, I think ASEAN has been very friendly and cooperative with all the dialogue partnership. Second, in terms of trade, investment, Recording tourism. In progress. Second, in totality, that is that mutual dependency ASEAN on both two sides, and in that sense, it cannot afford to destroy itself by taking side. But ASEAN is not a military entity compared to Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, or even Australia, or India, that have the military power and more or less are in already in alliances with the United States. So in that sense, to take sides means you know, that has the military element and as it is not and will not be in the position to antagonize either side because it doesn't have the military capacity to do so. And then at the same time, ASEAN has come out with three very important documents. One is the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, which a lot of countries have already had access to. Second is the Declaration on Nuclear Free Zone. And third, very important, Declaration on Southeast Asia as a zone of freedom and neutrality. So ASEAN has already progressed itself what it is and what are its inspirations. And I think it cannot be forced by either China or U.S. Because both the United States and China should have known what had been going on for the past 30, 40 years. It, each of them does not have the right even to ask questions and have no moral justification to press ASEAN to take side. And in that sense, ASEAN can take a very strong stand. And the sooner that East Timor become a member of ASEAN. The very personality of uh, Ramos Pata would be very important indeed. He could be the spokesperson for ASEAN where the whole world would be listening to him. A man of stature, a man with, I think, extensive knowledge about international politics and so on. So he could speak on behalf of ASEAN, if ASEAN were to come out very quickly of its neutral and non-aligned stand. So I am not deterred that the US or China would be pressing. I don't think they have the audacity to do so. And it would be more immoral for them to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah. Economic prosperity, economic prosperity. I think ASEAN now is has a, is a home to more than 600 million people, right? 600 million, 650 million people, uh, with a GDP of uh, more approximately 4 trillion, 4 trillion dollars. 
and then uh, it increased that more to become a very, very strong economic block, social uh, cohesion, you know, uh, uh, stealing, and then uh, harmony among, among people, society, and then uh, prosperity. I think it would be, it would be difficult for the nation to, to, to try to grab, you know, for the for the rest. The important is that we work together. So we propose the twenty one years in time. We could uh, work together for that end, you know, to develop even more. Yeah. And normally, normally, uh, people used to say bully, yeah, the, the bully for your interest. But when when we are we are all conscious, you know, conscious and then well prepared psychologically, uh, economically, uh, politically. I think it will be very difficult for the, the, the way the nations to try to bring up one of the one of the members for their own interest. Um, I just want to touch uh, a little bit about uh, the condition, conditionality that the uh, minister has mentioned. Uh, if we look at the at the, the criteria set forth in the ASEAN uh, Article 6 in the ASEAN. Uh, on the new membership, it will have already met the three criteria. One is that it is already recognized as part of a Southeast Asian region. And secondly, it is recognized by all other countries. Yeah. And then the, the, the third is that the one that the minister has said, uh, we have we already acceded to the to the uh, Treaty of Amity. So we compromise ourselves to by the Asian chapter and all these women that uh, will be created uh, within the organization. So and then I think for will be only only the preparation of facilities all these that uh, maybe uh, ASEAN you know, general has said that uh, when you are in you know uh, they could hand a hand you know, to, to help us and prepare ourselves to be actively as a member in the in the, in the organization. And on the Indonesian side uh, I'll bring Christine just mentioned about the, some concerns about the what is in Indonesia. Yes. I was in the in 2000, came to Indonesia. And I first was in Indonesia, the second day was uh, because I led a little bit of uh, conflict resolution uh, about it in, in Virginia, so they sent me there to try to help, you know, tolling down the situation. Because uh, 20% of Timorese people, they opted for integration in Indonesia. And those people, a uh, bigger part of them, trapped in Indonesia. And that could be a very, very destabilizing factor in Indonesia. So I was sent there to try to approach them uh, and so on. And I could see at the time that uh, some part of Indonesia were reluctant. They showed belligerent uh, approaches, they showed belligerent. Uh, uh, not, not that friendly. But later on, with our approaches, with our leaders, far side leaders, like uh, what Mrs. has said, uh, that we managed to approach them, we managed to, to, to correct those uh, uh, bad intentions that they have, uh, those, those uh, groups that were before in England, that they felt in the military and so on. But then we, now, even Indonesian people said, that they, they, they said, and then, uh, uh, continue to say that uh, if yesterday, if yesterday, in the past, we see each other just as a friend, now we see each other as brothers and sisters. This, this is what they say. Uh, you know why? Because instead of us, there are is here, there is witness, that in, uh, in 2000, soon after our proclaim, uh, our response of independence, the first thing that we, do, we did was reconciliation with the nation. You see that we are beating with beating, but we stretch our hands, you know, come. Let us bury the past and then we, we, we uh, move forward to uh, that future for, for us and for our generations, for the future. And uh, with that, you know, I met some of the commanders of Soviet in, in Timor. I was in the Philippines. Uh, the ambassador in the ambassador in the Philippines was uh, the former commander in Italy. He was, you know, commander in Italy, just for the the, the orders, you know, but he said, he said it, yes. He was really, really, really afraid to us, and then he said something 
the expression shows that uh, they really feel remorse that something was was wrong in the past. They didn't think, and now we become very friendly. So I think this is what ASEAN countries want that we, we contribute for the peace, so that we could grow, we could, uh, we could uh, develop ourselves and then grow together. Yeah. So, but this I have to I have to I have to uh, salute you know all ASEAN countries and uh, that comes around the world and gave us the conditions. You came with your support, everything. It was create the conditions for you to be able to think positively and then be forgive instead of retaliating. Thank you. Thank you. I think the team you wanted to yes. also comment. Yes, for, for instance, on the, on the um, that uh, his excellency uh, that you just uh, raised yeah anyway we can say this is a this is a capacity of ASEAN to, to work in peace and for peace uh, I would say that uh, uh, because I, I said just before that uh, uh, ASEAN was quite slow in uh, decision making especially talking about conflict okay but at the same time, for sure, I mean, since ASEAN was uh, created in uh, '67, they really succeeded to uh, to bring, uh, I mean, to, to bring kind of not not kind of peace uh, together, uh, and uh, and it was not so easy because we were talking about relation between Indonesia and Timor Leste, but that was the same. I mean, uh, when when the grouping was done, uh, relation were tanks between Cambodia and, uh, well, not in 67, but uh, in the 90s, between Cambodia and, uh, and Vietnam, or but in the back to the 60s, uh, tense relation uh, between um, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Philippines, and Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, I mean, for different reasons, for historical reasons. And uh, so, um, I mean, all the all these countries have experienced a way or another, and a time or another, they have experienced how it was to to be around the table with your rival, and I want, don't don't want to say your enemy, but it's almost this. And in some time it was like this, but they always succeeded. I mean, it, it was exactly the point of ASEAN creation. I mean, to succeed, to stay around the table. I mean, and to talk together. And uh, and to uh, go over the the crisis. So the, the only crisis that I really cannot solve now uh, is about Burma, about Myanmar. Uh, that's uh, that's a really difficult situation for for ASEAN. And it reminds me that at that time in the 90s they were not so keen to integrate. Uh, Myanmar at that time, but anyway, that's too far from uh, from Timor-Leste. And um, I, I just uh, wanted to come back on the, the relation between Timor-Leste and the big powers in the region. Timor-Leste has the, the, the same uh, relation, the same kind of relation, balanced relation, like we said, that the rest of the ASEAN countries, meaning that they want to work with everyone and not depending of of one. So Timor Leste has a very good relation with China. Obviously, China is present, but we many times we can read in the newspapers that China is very present. Uh, I mean, um, uh, that he has two straight relations with Timor Leste, and but in the grouping in ASEAN, Timor Leste, I mean, opposite the, to, the, to many countries in in, in ASEAN. Timor Leste uh, is not uh, the commercial uh, partner. The main commercial partner is not uh, China, but China is the main commercial partner of Thailand. I think, if I'm not wrong, uh, Indonesia for sure. Uh, I mean, most of the countries. So you see, it's uh, sometimes we can have wrong idea. I, I like very much uh, the newspapers and so on, but sometimes you, you, we need to be careful also of what we read. And um, so, good relation with China, but doesn't want to be submitted to China for sure. And I think the the leaders know very well uh, with who they have uh, uh, intensive network. 
uh, with uh, they have a deep history. I mean, for history, historical reasons, there are uh, many links with Australia. This is with Indonesia, really the closest partner. And they have plenty of kind of relation uh, uh, in which uh, economical relation because of uh, petroleum and uh, with uh, everyone in the region, uh, Asia Pacific, I would say, with Japan, you know. And these are also the same partners huh, than uh, the other countries in, uh, in, uh, in Asia. And so, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is the, the, the spirit of uh, working with everyone, but not depending of, uh, on one. Yeah, and I think this is a really, really fair. And um, I don't know if uh, I have time for one more or remark. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, we were talking about the, the conditionality and, uh, for instance, the ge geographical, re geographical matter. Uh, Timor Leste, for sure, is one um, country located in Southeast Asia. And since, uh, the, since I mean, for, for a long time, I am a geographer. <laughs> but, but not only for geographer, I mean, for many people we know from, from very long time that, uh, I mean, at least from the independence, that Timor Leste is the only country uh, from Southeast Asia who doesn't belong yet to ASEAN. It, it's presented like this huh, for a long time. And ASEAN, when, we want, when people want to describe what ASEAN is, ASEAN is all Southeast Asian country, countries less Timor Leste. So from the beginning, we have a link straight link between uh, uh, being in uh, Southeast Asia, ASEAN, and Timor-Leste. This is the missing, uh, missing point, I would say. Huh? And uh, what is interesting is that uh, at the end, uh, where, where, how could we extend uh, ASEAN? Uh, because uh, if we take this to the straight uh, view, Timor-Leste is the only Southeast Asian country who doesn't belong to, uh, to, uh, to ASEAN. So it means that ASEAN is finished. In, uh, I mean, when, when Timor-Leste would have integrated ASEAN, it would be, I mean, the grouping would be finished. But we never know. I, I don't want to bring you too, too far, but I mean, when you read some geographers, like Frédéric Durand who wrote about Southeast Asia, the moving geography of Southeast Asia, or uh, another geographer, uh, Pierre, uh, um, Christian Vatalou, uh, who wrote about the invention of continents uh, and oceans. And uh, I mean, you can see how, how uh, regional uh, association, regional organization, this is just like one continent. People still decide who should belong to what part in the world, so what continent or what, what uh, regional integration, a regional uh, grouping, or to another one. For instance, the eastern part of Indonesia, Philippines, and Timor Leste uh, belonged, I mean, on the map in the earlier, in the 20th century, before the 1980s, uh, Timor Leste and the eastern part of uh, Indonesia were uh, drawn like belonging to Oceania, not belonging to Asia. So that's, that's funny to, to, to remember that. Huh? And the idea, the concept of Southeast Asia, that is not so old than this. So when I read that PNG, Papua New Guinea, could one day uh, be a, a new ASEAN member, OK, I don't understand why, because it doesn't belong. I mean, me, as a ge geographer, I think it doesn't belong to Southeast Asia, so I don't see why it should join ASEAN, except if uh, the, the criteria number one of the Article 6 of the Charter about the location in uh, Southeast Asia is a bit uh, reviewed, or because we review what we consider of being uh, Southeast Asia as a geographical uh, Entity, I would say. Thank you very much. That's it. You had a direct response. Uh, when Vietnam joined ASEAN, 
since then to this very minute, not a word was being uttered by the Vietnamese leadership about B-55 bombers flying out of Thailand and were bombing the hell of Vietnam. And on many occasions, I did press the Vietnamese counterpart openly to show my deep participation and the fact that Vietnam could reconcile to itself and move forward together inside the ASEAN country. And I think, Ambassador, it would be something for you and also to our Indonesian friends that don't go back but move forward together. And I think East Timor and Indonesia, the biggest and the smallest, would work and help out a lot together to push ASEAN forward. And not to forget about the French German reconciliation after the end of the war. I think at the village called Ko in Switzerland, the beginning of the reconciliation that led to the formation of the coal and steel and finally the European Union. We can learn a lot from the French and the German experience after maybe 400 years of war fact. We have to move forward. I think that that would be very, very important indeed to keep on reminding ourselves of our obligation to the present and to the future, but not to use historical events to teach the young children to continue to hate one another. another. Second is that when Thailand was having a bit of the border conflict on the old Hindu temple with Cambodia, President Yodong of Indonesia and especially the Foreign Minister Mati, Mati both were very active in uh, trying to help to mediate and all of this and so on. And third, very important, why we are not moving forward in Myanmar. Because the present set of ASEAN leadership, especially the foreign ministers, they are not friends with one another, they do not know each other, they don't talk to one another. It has somewhat killed the long tradition of ASEAN leadership, especially at the senior official and in particular and the foreign minister, for whatever happened and so on, we always sit and talk together very informally, trying to push things forward, overcome this Nike cyclone, the seven point roadmap, and all of this. It's always a constant discussion on a very friendly, over a glass of wine, not the, my Muslim friends and so on, but the Malaysian foreign minister at the time has an excellent collection of cigars. But, but that was the type of the working relationship of being very friend, family members. But somehow that tradition is being lost. That's why we could not push the Myanmar crisis in spite of the five-point consensus because they are not friends to one another. That tradition has been lost. And hopefully with the new Thai government, with the new foreign minister, that tradition would come back and to rekindle that type of working relationship that has nothing to do with the formal meeting in the room. It's the informal meeting outside the room that we were able to push ASEAN forward on many fronts, on many challenges, and so on. Thank you. Thank you, Sansi. One second, Mr. Nadi, would you like to add to this first round of the panel discussion? Yes, I would like to wrap. I mean, I've lost a little bit of it because the, there was a, a problem in the connection, I think. But I just want to add a little bit also to connecting to what I have said before and to what ha has been said now by, by the uh, participants. So what I think is still very evident, like when we talk about the requirements, um, we are all aware of the fact that Timor Leste has long met the official requirements. But the membership procedure does not only go back to 2011, it goes back far longer because informally it has already been expressed in 1975. So we can see that there is um, a lot more complexities in the game and I'm uh, saying, uh, using the term game consciously because it seems like kind of a game between global rivalries. And um, I think there is an evident dialogue and clash between centralities within the Southeast Asian region. 
and um, Timor-Leste has always been a kind of a predominant middleman between this, um, these rulings and trellings. So um, I think Timor-Leste's position could be seen kind of as an underdog situation, like the center between major political powers, as I've said in, in the previous um, talk. And therefore, it could act as kind of a test, or has been a test for ASEAN Central, and specifically now um, with the consideration of the United States, the China, CPOP, the European Union, Australia. It's quite in the middle, not necessarily only geographically, but um, in also in, in, a, in our mental manner. Right? And um, the history, yes, the history of the West is very different to the other Southeast Asian countries. So it's also a matter of identity and collective identity and collective identity building. And this is what I've meant previously with the new global social structure. Because I think ASEAN recognizes by now that um, it has to move beyond its previous narrative of identity and identity making. Because the social cultural uh, component of the regional grouping is still something that is very scarce and it is not um, very, uh, like, um, well established. Um, so it has always been, as I said before, more formal, bureaucratic, and narrow. Um, so, well, I would say that there is a multiplicity um, of different platforms at stake in, in the Southeast Asian regions, on the reality platforms, um, that is cross cutting this um, international region um, network that is now in the in strong moment of, of rising. And uh, therefore, I think it, it is of great relevance to, to further think about how this global powers problematize several configurations of this international, of this new international community and order, and specifically to understand the bottom-up and top-down interrelations that are in place here. Because um, when we take the case of timor I think it's very evident for for understanding that this is not only a political matter, because in the Southeast Asian region. And this is also part of my PhD thesis, is that ASEAN is one of the main economic and political players of the world, um, still doesn't have a common shared identity narrative from bottom up. So there's like internally, country internally from each country, there is still no awareness about the grouping. So I think this move now of admitting to Malesh, or like um, being more open to admit to Malesh, is also a move towards um, making a statement in this global map of positioning itself in a more social cultural narrative to, to gain a more power in, in terms of cultural diplomacy and, and translation, as I've said. So, this is to my intervention. Thank you very much, Nadine. Very interesting to comment on Asian identity. Um, yes, please. Uh, it's hardly time to open the floor for questions from the audience. Uh, Professor Yang, please. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, today I'm very happy to have the opportunity to share and to exchange ideas, especially the first time I uh, have many ideas from uh, the different sides, uh, from the ambassador of the Steam from the ASEAN commander of the forces of the uh, 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 Asana, could you please yeah. move the microphone okay. closer okay. to you? Also, uh, the ASEAN is for the needs of foreign affairs, etc. I find it a uh, very interesting one. Uh, me, my name is Yang Yang I come from China. Um, I was professor at the university. I uh, I work always on the South Asian studies. Uh, including also the immigration to Asia and Indo, also policy Chinese studies, etc. Uh, things I take also many attention on the evolution uh, of this more uh, as a non country of the Southeast Asia. Uh, today, uh, we can say that for every meeting or the seminar about the international affairs, we cannot abide. Affect uh, between China and the US. But uh, I think this is a very complicated problem. I don't like to talk about this topic today. Maybe we can find uh, other opportunities because we need the time, we need uh, maybe 
have uh, more the, the, the people are working on uh, the topic of uh, this aspect. Today, I want just to talk about uh, the magnitude uh, of the exact moment. Mm, but on the, uh, the Chinese uh, the relation uh, with this technology in China. Uh, first rate, uh, I'm come from China, but uh, I'm not a representative of the Chinese government. Uh, I, I talk my opinion uh, with my personal opinion. Uh, okay. uh, firstly, I find that uh, things, the period of the struggle for the independence, China always uh, take uh, attitude first for the Senate, uh, and because for the Chinese uh, people, uh, we have also the experience of the Asian government, as a government, and we have many the same of the same people that the people who want to have independence. And this is also many uh, the, the foundation of, uh, of the Chinese foreign policy. And just for this, uh, Chinese support also uh, the movement of the independence. And just for this, we can find that uh, two years ago, uh, the, the independence in the 2000s, China uh, established, established uh, the bank, the representative office uh, in the uh, is the high level at Amazon. Uh, uh, and uh, China has established the official relation with this just the day. It means that the 20th May 2002, uh, with this demand to show uh, the support to the United States. And uh, since uh, 20 years, uh, last year, in the 20th year, uh, 20th anniversary of the establishment of the relation between the uh, Chinese president and the Chinese North president have exchanged. Uh, the telegram and for the verification uh, This is a long history, but uh, I want to just do uh, something. First thing, uh, it's a thing all uh, in an independent country. And uh, since the independence, it is fine to keep a uh, uh, neutral uh, position in the world like that. And we can find that this war is a not so big country. But since it is independence today, this country established an uh, official relationship with 122 countries, if I haven't missed And we can find that the, uh, this uh, Institimor hope uh, to keep independence in the field of political, economic, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, according to the complex situation of the economy of the society of this country, it's trying also to do many efforts to search the help from the different areas, big or small, strong, powerful, or not so strong. Uh, it means that. Uh, uh, we can say that this is is a good example for the the for the current uh, current people uh, this uh, and uh, we can say that uh, this is uh, that is solid uh, foundation of the institutional foreign policy. Uh, I think. Uh, China tried to establish the relationship, but on this foundation, mm -hmm. on this basis. And uh, uh, we can find that uh, in the China, uh, like the uh, Belt and provinces, uh, we can find that East Timor is one of the earliest country uh, signed the agreement with China in 2027. And the experiments of uh, Steve have participated in the first uh, summit 
It goes, it's important for the integration test we are saying. Another side that is also important for the development goal of this demand. The, uh, because uh, President uh, Hotta uh, uh, said uh, last year he was a president and that he hoped he, uh, his demand can become a member of that yeah, during his mandate. Uh, that would be good, basically. And uh, for me, I think that this year, in the 2023, uh, is a very special year for the uh, membership of the Union. Why? Because this year, Indonesia is the chairman of the ASEAN. And uh, if we can find, we know, everybody knows, What's the relationship, uh, what's the history of uh, the, uh, the relation between uh, this people and Indonesia, etc. And uh, if this year uh, this people can become injury uh, in ASEAN, I think it's very important for the reconciliation <coughs> between two countries, it's also very important for the integration <coughs> of the uh, develop, uh, integration and development of us. Okay, I hope uh, uh, just for this deal, uh, uh, your country can become a member of ASEAN this year. Okay? <laughs> thank you, thank you so thank much you for, uh, for sharing the Chinese perspective, or your perspective on China US uh, relations uh, and ASEAN relations. Are there any other questions or comments from the audience? Uh, a bit of time. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah, please, 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 I mean, in principle, I mean, the, the, the membership is uh, is accepted, but we don't know what that's uh, at the moment. We, I mean, maybe uh, His Excellency Vencio knows. I don't know what it could happen, the, the full membership uh, to, to ASEAN. So we, we don't know yet uh, this, uh, when it could uh, happen. And, um, and I wanted also to say that, uh, I mean, um, on your remarks on the China policy in Timor-Leste, uh, I, I, I wanted to bring the hope again to come back on the Australia's role in Timor-Leste in the light of China's advance in the region, as we said. Uh, because, I mean, Australia again belongs to the, the, the main partners or sometimes uh, rival. Uh, I mean, Australia has a complicated history with both Indonesia and with Timor-Leste. Oh, okay. But anyway, since the independent, the, the country is a close partner to, uh, to, to Timor-Leste. And I could see that um, for the last, uh, the last few years, I would say since 2017, but I would say even more since 2020, I mean, Australia, became closer and closer to, uh, to Timor-Leste because of its bad relation with China. Uh, and it does the same with Indonesia. Uh, because the, I mean, the, 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 the relation between Australia and China are quite tensed, I would say, uh, have de deeply deteriorated. And then Australia really uh, rely on Timor-Leste and Indonesia, not only, also on Japan uh, and many other partners. But I would say that I could see uh, how the, the links were reinforced in the last uh, few years. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, uh, China delivered uh, uh, the vaccine uh, to Timor-Leste, but Australia gave uh, I mean, covered almost, uh, I don't know, I would say 60%, 70% of the all needs in Timor Leste uh, uh, of uh, vaccine against COVID. Huh? Uh, 
so yeah, this just to show again the, the, the weight uh, of uh, Australia in the, in the region, but also Europe and, uh, and Japan and many more. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Christine. Would you like to respond? Yeah, please. Uh, you need to talk to the uh, ambassador, uh, but later you no. have first person ambassador. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I, no, I was a bit confused about the, the names right now. I have this name. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think, in fact, uh, we, since the restoration of independence, we, our colleague here from China, uh, stated uh, very correctly uh, since day one, yeah? day one, we, we I think it was uh, it was conducted. It was called uh, held in the nineteenth uh, to twentieth of May, zero hour, uh, and then the next day, China signed the, the diplomatic relations with them. After that, they they found uh, the support in many areas. Uh, just the same thing for him as well. Support of you know that uh, we we are still very very lack many many facilities uh, to face the pandemic, so we just rely on the on the international uh, uh, populations. Uh, vaccines came from Australia, from China, from European uh, from Asia, from Indonesia, so we could have been able to survive. And then just on the uh, geopolitics. Uh, I think I missed the part that I uh, in, in the first question. Uh, we have we have experience in the in the border disputes and so on. Uh, the most salient one was uh, with Australia when we discussed to establish our border, maritime boundary. Uh, it was really difficult at the time. But then there was a, a mechanism in UN which was dormant since, since its creation, which is the compulsory reconciliation. We checked the, here and there, we said, there is a mechanism in UN. And then our, our leader, our chief negotiator, Sonia uh, Bouchman, uh, said, okay, we have to craft that, uh, that uh, mechanism. And we went through that mechanism, we bring us to the table, we discuss, and then we solve our dispute. I think uh, it was signed in the, in the, in the UN, uh, in the presence of uh, Secretary General, to end the, the long, you know, uh, lasting dispute in the, uh, with the Australia regarding the maritime boundary. So I think this, this is the approach that we would like to share, uh, the experience to uh, uh, colleagues in the, in the, in the, in the, in the room, and then uh, to, to, to ask the that uh, when we are to Asia, we bring all this experience, all this, uh, all this uh, concept of thinking that uh, disputes, we cannot just uh, go and then uh, resort to violence, resort to threat, but we have to really, really find mechanisms. We can create mechanisms, even though they don't know we create mechanisms to, to, uh, to resolve our, our dispute amicably. Because our end is peace. We have to have peace. So that our people could contribute for the development of the And then we could, we could, uh, we could uh, see the, the, the growth, the economic growth, the economic development, and so on. So, so this is the experience that I want to share. And then the geopolitics, if we had simple as any, we could bring all this. And the, the, the first one was a reconciliation in the region. Many parties, many organizations in the world, and she was the zone, they came to us and said, no, we have to bring two generals in the to behave. Imagine if you, you brought them to the head, what would happen to us? So we, we continue to come to Thailand, border it, and to Europe, 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 Europe to border and so on. But we said no, we go for the country. We shut the bus, we just close the chapter, and then we go for war. And now we have peace. I think peace is the, the paramount, uh, paramount uh, prerequisite that uh, everybody wants so that uh, we can move forward in order to get the Thank you very much for this comment. Uh, at the end of the seminar, because we have reached the time, but if there is one urgent question remark, uh, 
then I will allow that. Excellent. That's it, please. You sorry, are sorry, 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 too much. I think the word identity. I think in the Cold War, the five ASEAN was the identity was clear, anti-communism. Post Cold War, it was ASEAN and globalization, multilateralism, and so on. But now there are two choices: one party system or multi-party system. And I think ASEAN have to have that self-introspection, which way to go. And I did join with a couple of political friends like Songkran Si about three years ago trying to sell the idea of democratic transformation of ASEAN. Not much of the take but I would like to put this on the table once again. Unless and until ASEAN become democratic, then there is no identity. And we, don't, we can go on and so on and so on and so on. So we need to find a new identity and I think democracy should be the answer. Or the other way is everyone go authoritarian. Let's have military government finally. And I can share all the experience of military government. Thank you, Thank you very much. I think that was the closing remark for this. Thank mm -hmm. you.